pretty young. And how I didn't speak any English. I went to third grade just firing no English except hello. Wow. That must have been pretty intense. Yeah, That's I got amazing. picked on a lot. I, I, uh, man, All the white kids picked on me. I oh. understand. Well, so you made it. You made it here. And you have been... So right now, where do you spend most of your time? What's your how, What's your days like right now? Like what's a typical day? Uh, uh, I, I would say that a majority of my life is my family, uh, obviously. I want to be spending as much time with, with the kids and the wife as possible. Um, I've been training pretty hard. That's been a probably number two priority. Oh yeah, can we talk about this upcoming event? It's why public, not? It's right? It's public, sure. All right, why don't you tell them what's happening in April? What kind of uh, competition do you have yourself in right now? Uh, a friend of mine and I made a bet about who's a, who can beat each other up in a boxing match, and so I, we're boxing that's in happening. April. That friend is Kevin Hart, so that's... Uh, <laughs> I don't like the name drop. Yeah, I'll do I'm it, not I'll do it for you on the podcast. We'll put it out there. Um, we are... Uh, we may even have been offline right now. Hold on. Stream lost connection. So uh, that's possible. Oh, that's great. Well, that's Necker Island, you know, that's when you great. want to do it on a beach. God, we were flowing. We were. Yeah. Oh, hey, guys. Are, we have good flow? Yeah. About you, did you order salads for us? You love me. Oh, huh? we're back? Hold on, we're back. I think we're back. All right, we're back. And that, that thing, this showed zero, so I knew that it wasn't zero. Uh, it was up. We were doing, we had a little momentum going. We're back. So I, to mention again. Where do we leave off? Not sure we lost left off, but we were just talking about he has a boxing match against a buddy of his who happens to be Kevin Hart, which is exciting because I know he would love to hit you, right? Like in a in a in a in an arena, he's gonna get a chance. You guys have battled. Yeah, he always and, jokes about how he can legally yeah beat take, up. take a take a swing at you. So that that'll be fun. And who's the favorite right now in that? Well, he laid me thirty five to one. So wow. I'm assuming he's probably the favorite. And yes, he's a favorite. He's very fast. He's very strong, and he's quick as hell. And I mean, have you ever seen a Persian guy in a boxing match? No, no, I have not. And thirty-five not to really one—that's roulette. That's like putting a number and hitting on a roulette wheel. Thirty-five to one, exactly. So it's a long shot. Maybe it's yeah, closer. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, if you ask me honestly, do I want to get in a ring with this guy? Of course not. But I can't pass down. A, I can't turn down a good bet, and that's really why I took this bet because I was getting thirty-five to one. And I'm just thinking, wow, I have to one in thirty-five times get lucky and win this fight. Plus, it's a good reason. To get in really good shape. I mean, I've always been in decent shape, but this gave me the motivation to really go after it. Yeah, you're uh, 40 years old, and how has that changed? Do you feel? A no was there a noticing time where your body, or you feel like you've slowed down a little? I mean, is it harder because you always you eat really well, you you stay healthy, but could you feel your age, like at a certain age? I feel age, great. I mean, I do feel 40 when I wake up in the morning, and I'm a little bit slower to move and get out of bed. But honestly, I feel better than I've ever felt. And uh, tell me about, so when you won the, the, the 18 million, I want to just talk about it, because it is, it is the most notable, I think, poker accomplishment, that 18 million. Can you talk me through what happened? Like, where, how long before did you decide to play? When were you like, I'm going to play? Because this tournament was... I wasn't really planning on playing because ESPN asked me to do the commentary. So I was kind of excited to do that. And I remember one friend of mine who was like, hey, are you going to play? I want to buy 20%. And I'm like, really? If he wants to buy 20% of a, a fish... Poker fish, pro fish. They pro call fish me. is nickname. <laughs> um, I was like, well, maybe I can sell off a little bit more and find a way to play this tournament, right? And so I messaged a few of my friends, and in like one afternoon, all of a sudden, I was playing in the tournament. I couldn't believe it. And so I took a shot, and here we are today. I knew that if I won that tournament, again, I would eventually make your podcast. That is, uh, you're definitely. That's this is you qualify. You qualify for the podcast, okay, that's good. for sure. Um, all right, let's. We got to talk about Burning Man. This is an important part of my life. You've been talking about this. I know you do a lot of. You're known for some side bets, prop bets. You always want to bet people if they're going to come to to Burning Man or not, because it's a commitment. It's a, it's not just like a money thing. It's it's a very big commitment to go out there. Tell me what Burning Man means for you, and why do you love Burning Man so much? Because you you are like Mr. Burning Man. You've put, you've brought a well, lot of people out there. You kind of put on the event. You well, you have helped putting on the event what is so special to Burning Man about you and you have a 10 year bet I believe uh, yes unfortunately that bet was with Gavin Smith who oh my god I who, did not know who that. passed yeah which makes me very sad that because is he was such a gem super sad he's a great I guy I really liked him I... a lot um, but yeah my bet for going to Burning Man for wow I did not eight know years was with him jeez and I was a couple years away but it's super sad for yeah that I okay well Anyway, no, no, yeah. So, but yeah, Burning so now Man, you know, um, Burning Man is special to me. Um, we went eight years ago, m myself and two of my dearest friends, uh, and it was just the three of us in an RV, 
and that has grown to what we have today, which is a, a beautiful camp of about 150 people, and it's just a community of friendship and love, and it's just a, for me, it's a, it's a great place to go and kind of reset. You know, when I go to Burning Man, I feel like I get to actually disconnect from my life and all my responsibilities and all my work commitments and everything. Try and put my phone away. I check it maybe once a day if I can. Um, obviously, to check in with my family and whatnot. Um, and it's a place where everybody's on the same platform, right? So whether you're worth $100 million or you're dead broke, you're the same person for eight days. And that's pretty special. You don't get that anywhere else in the world. So when there's no ulterior motives for people to hang out and just be who they are, it changes the playing field as far as social dynamics go. No one's trying to move up the social ladder. And everybody's extremely present because nobody really has their phone. And everybody's in costume, and it's just, it's probably the most, not probably, it is the most incredible place I've ever been to, and I highly recommend anyone that can go to go and experience it. And you talk to a lot of people that go to Burning Man, and they are so, so ecstatic, and you can see the joy that they give by talking about it, that they get. And you can only feel it if you go. So I mean, you've been. Don't you think it's a pretty special? Place? Yeah, I was just I was just getting ready to not say not just because you met your now baby wife, mama, with, you know? yeah, baby on the way. Yeah, no, it is it is a special place. It is eye opening, life changing. I would highly recommend for if you haven't been or haven't heard of it, check it out and see if it interests you. But I would recommend it. Um, we have uh, some of our friends here, Tony and and uh, Dave Silverman. This guy right well. here, is this the, is number I, one. That's his number one. This is my one number right one here. best friend in the world. And, and we bagels went. now. Bagels right in the mix too, guys. Get in here, Burning Man. Can you guys vouch Burning for Burning Man, Man in here? Yeah, you guys gotta do it. Look at they're telling you. These, these ones are real deal. deal. When I was 16 years old, I ran away from home and moved in with this guy and his family. True story. True story. Wow, look at that. <laughs> That's just perfect for perfect timing. So I used to get picked on in high school all the time, and he used to help defend me. It wasn't easy. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you. <laughs> It's a lot. It's like a full-time job. Wow. Well, there you go. Look at that. Here we are at Necker Island. We're all hanging out. We're having a good time. Burning Man, uh, high recommendation. I did meet my wife there. Antonio sees the truth. One of the reasons I think that those of you who don't know Antonio, he just... He, he is a uh, natural energy force. He brings people together. He brings great situations. Uh, the reason I've met some of my closest friends are directly from Antonio, who's one of my closest friends. Some of my best experiences in my life that I've attended or done. Uh, met Bill uh, directly through Antonio and one of my great friendships there as well. It's just, it's pretty amazing the, the uh, foresight, the the, the vision you have for things and, and bringing people well, together. So I, I want to acknowledge you for that. And two you. of the best experiences in my life have been directly um, from you and then and really yeah what i mean it's not like you, you didn't introduce my wife but i wouldn't have met my wife at least at that time maybe no i'll take full credit all right. you, you he gets not a lot matter. of credit and that took you to burning man you met your wife i get credit all i right. mean let's yeah, vote yeah. on that okay so yeah there, there it is and Fair as far enough. as people go i i believe that life is much i believe that life is better shared obviously whether it's with your loved one or your friends or your kids or you know and whatnot and so before i had a family it was always my friends and so every year, there's typically on average one person I would meet in my life that I just truly fell in love with that I wanted to have forever. And so that's kind of been my crew of, of people, and you obviously know all of them now. So yeah. you're one of them, PBF. Uh, you're I, one of my best friends. Thank you, and it's yeah. great to it's great to be in that group. It's a it's a PBF. Fun group. He's a professional. It's always active. He's a pro. It's always active. So um, we're what about upcoming plans? Any any type of is there any more, like, is there a tournament you just won't miss? Or are you, like, kind of yeah. out of the tournaments? Is there some you just... The yeah, February uh, Commerce Tournament, I'll be there. And then after that, I believe the next one is probably the one in Montreal at the Playground. Oh, Playground. Shout out to Playground. Great place. Yeah. So that'll be my schedule. But I really try and not leave home too much. I just don't want to miss anything with the kids. It's just, it's too good. I'm very lucky and fortunate to have a... Oh, speak of the devil. I was just talking about you. I know, that's why I popped in. You to have a wife who really takes care of my kids on a level that I can't explain. Like, nobody can understand how good of a mom this woman is. And so it makes my life a lot easier. It's true. And in turn, I really genuinely want to be home. And I don't want to miss anything. My kids are, my boys are just incredible. Yes, they are. I can vouch. It's so true. And uh, so no. tell the truth now. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, no, it's uh, it's it is uh, I, I a baby on the way. I can tell. It's like one of those things. That I've seen it. I know it. It changes things. I've, a lot of my friends have one, two kids now, so uh, it is obviously a balancing act to make sure you're, you're about to find out. Yeah, gonna get it firsthand. Can't wait for that. And what about um? Oh yeah, I was gonna sp- gotta give a little. So we, we talk about this, guys. Make sure you give Antonio a follow on Twitter. He's got Magic Antonio on Instagram, Twitter, all the good stuff. Whoa, what's going on here, Lil? Shout out to Wild Bill, man, getting it in on his. Well, 50th. I saw him cozying up on the couch with. Yeah, what man. you see in the picture, and so I, I said, Perky, can I post this? And he said, Well, I don't think my kids follow you, so sure, why not? There you go. <laughs> He's there. the best. And uh, get the get the retweets out, guys, for the podcast we have going on right now. This will be recorded. You can always come back and check it out. And then I want to mention Steak Kings because it's a pretty cool platform. People get to engage with. They get to buy a piece. It can be super, super small. I know you've posted a few things on there for some live televised cash games. This will, you, you said maybe for the LAPC you'll give some people a chance to sweat. No, maybe for sure. I always try and sell a little piece on Steak Kings. I think, I think they're great. Awesome. Um, yeah, I don't know if you're posted right now, but it's coming up, and you guys can we check time. it out. And yeah. then I also always offer a piece when I play on the uh, poker after uh, poker after uh, poker go in Vegas. I always sell a little piece. I, I love, love to give people a little sweat. It is fun, man. It's it's cool that people can get engaged and, and get it's in. Probably there. not the best bet because I'm pro you fish. You fire. You go for it. You're gonna win though. You got people are gonna get a big score. You're gonna be out the door. That's what you do. You're not you're not gonna be min cashing a lot. No, I'm not really a min casher. I'm either out having dinner or. Try and get a lot of. Chips. I do remember at the one drop, just like you, your style exactly. I do what I'm PBF kind of a, does. I am kind of crazy these days, but I remember back in the 111k one drop version, not the million. You were we, me and you were on break, and we were two of the shortest three stacks. I don't know if you remember this, and it was like a 107, 160 something thousand dollar bubble. So meaning, if you take one off the money, you get zero, and if you cash, you get at least yeah, 166. We were talking on break, we we're kind of whatever, and then next thing I know, you know, I was super short, and it was like kind of almost like it's like looks like it was gonna be one or the other, and then you were all in with jacks to aces, yep, and you were out the door. You literally like put your backpack on, you out. Said, you said, you like, text me if anything good happens. You like let, you were literally out the door, walking, jack on the river for Boom. life, and I was like, well, that's cool. I love you know, great for you, but I was like, <laughs> I mean, I don't want a bubble because that would really hurt. And then I just hunkered in, got there, and then we actually got a little bit deeper, but that was a uh, you had some good success in I one drop. That tournament been on good the river out the door aces the jacks on the stone bubble that some, never happens some guys it always happens it. to you not a, not for you I, I mean until it doesn't so that that's another uh, good moment for you what about tell me about the Blasio WPT I gotta talk about that that is a tournament you have won at the oh, so your second WPT title you won the commerce and then you won this WPT you played Andrew Robel heads up yeah. what, what was uh what, that tournament you final table three or four years at a I row I won it and then I final table the next year and the next year I took fourth and then fifth I think yeah pretty crazy what is there anything you think on like is there something mentally about that like are there certain places do you feel you just perform better at or you don't really look at that you just kind of go really. I think you just run good sometimes and I decided to run good on that tournament three years in a row. Right. Well, the, and it's during your birthday week, and you have your yeah. friends out there. It's pretty cool. You know, the like, one I won against Andrew Robo, I hadn't won a tournament in seven years, and I won it. The final table was on my actual birthday. So on my birthday, I won the tournament. You got him drinking a lot. He's, he's a wizard. He's tough, that guy. Well, we, got, we got heads up, and I'm, I I could hold my liquor better than Robo. I'm like, Robo, we're heads up. We're on TV. Let's put on a show. Have a couple of drinks. So we took a few shots of tequila. And it worked out. I got the title, and life is good. Nice. That's beautiful. Uh, what tournaments or cash games? You had to pick one for moving forward. Would you, If you could only do one, would it be pretty easy for you? I mean, I like them both. I couldn't really pick one from the other. Just hard work. It's easier cash games, probably. Cash like, games are less of a commitment. Less of a commitment. You can also come and go as you wish. Um, but I do love the thrill of the tournament when you're deep in. So both still in play, but obviously I probably like cash games a little bit more. Although I don't really get to play that often, you know? Makes sense. Um, and. Uh, if you were going to give advice to a poker player out there, things have changed obviously since the heyday with uh, starting. If you were going to. Pick a new career. If that doesn't work, uh, go to college. If that doesn't work and you just have to be a poker player, then go pull up all of Jeff Gross's YouTube videos of his hands played and learn that way. 
It's a nice endorsement. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, what what uh what we, what did uh, bro your dad we call him bro he's a, he's a legend. Bro. What do we do? All time bro. Yeah, you guys probably have seen him on a on a YouTube video or somewhere along the way. He is a true legend. Tell me about how that was for him when you found out you were playing poker. How long did it take before he kind of like he got in there and was like, all right, this is cool. Like, what was there a moment when he was like, um, did he support the whole time? You're a good interviewer because you don't have anything even written down. You just yeah, we all this stuff is off it. the cuff. Fully. Didn't Not even make bad. notes. I do There's that a future for time. you in Let's this. See what happens. There's a future. We'll let them be the judge. Um, my, yeah, you know, I come from a very typical, well, I wouldn't say typical, but Iranian family, right? And so in my culture, it's just so different than in the States. You have to go to college. You have to either be a lawyer, dentist, or a doctor. And that's pretty much it. Or real estate. And so I obviously didn't go to college. I started, but I was doing magic and I was kind of into it and I wanted to create my own path. Yeah. And after doing magic for a year or so, uh, I thought I was going to be the next David Copperfield until I discovered poker. So all of a sudden, I have to go back to my father and say, hey, I think I'm going to actually gamble for a living. And so it wasn't the best time. He didn't really understand. Um, But to my surprise, I did invite him to watch me play one time at the Bay 101 in San Jose. And he came and sat behind me. And I was so on point that day. We were playing a spread limit game where you could bet anywhere from 20 to 200 on any given street. And I realized the winning formula was just to play really tight because of the spread. And I had pretty much nailed how everybody played, the tight players, the loose players, whatnot. And so that day I told my dad what people had before they turned their cards over, and I swear I was right 9 out of 10 times. Rounder scene. And he couldn't believe it. He, he, he looked at me like, how do you know what they have? And I'm like, Dad, this. And I kind of tried to break it down for him. And before I ever had any success in the WPT or anything like that, he was like, son, you have my support. And That's huge. That's a yeah, big it was, one. It was big. It was huge. That's awesome. Because he understood it. before it went prime. People in the chat saying, uh, bro is a chick magnet. That's correct. Pappy Van Winkle must have uh, seen some of the vlogs. He knows, bro, gets it done. So that is uh, that is huge to have family supporting and a little bit of a controversial thing. I, in Iran, poker is not at all, like you said, it's just not a thing. It's not, a le- it's not legal. Well, there are like, games, but it's, 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 not, it's, it's very illegal. Upon. Yeah, a deck of cards is illegal. Yeah. Speaking of that, we did, I'll say another trip. That I think my favorite was the Maldives that we went to in 2012. I mean, just that was like... That was a great trip. Yeah, it was a great it trip. gambling. Well, they, they had, we had poker chips, and they, they took them from us at customs. Yeah. Remember that? They wouldn't even let us bring in a regular just deck of cards and poker chip into the country. They took them at the airport, and I don't even think we got them on the way back. We I don't know if we got yeah, them back. Yeah, which is so ridiculous. Yeah. I so, mean, just let shows people you, do what they want to do. Culturally, though, you got to be careful. you got to know customs and what's going on. You don't want to put yourself in a bad spot. Um, that is a... Uh, that is that is true. We are going to. I, I want to. I put up something on Instagram. We'll take a few questions out there. Someone's asking about the Kevin Hart. Yes, the Kevin Hart. They are boxing in April at some uh, some time in April, and there's going to be a wager. And do you know what? Do you have a format even down? Have you guys agreed? Three there rounds, way? three minutes. Three rounds, three minutes. So what happens if you? No one gets like it's well, just we'll have judges, we'll obviously. Be scored. Yeah. Okay. Is uh who is there what kind of content media access is allowed? Am I? Can we do pregame warm up some other stuff like? I what? mean, you could probably bring the flow show. Um, we haven't really nailed that down yet. This isn't supposed to be like a big like promotional yeah. public kind of thing. We don't really want to make money off of it. This is just two buddies that want to get in a ring and fight. That happen to have very, it, fairly high profiles in their Well, you can't industries. say profiles. I mean, if you put me next to Kevin, it's like but, night and day. All right, but you could take acting, comedian, whatever. You could take poker. You have a high profile. It's a, it's a right, different Right, but space. everyone that knows me already knows him. So it's not all like right. I bring anything to the table. Anyway, it's just a couple buddies that want to get in a ring. But obviously, now that everyone knows about it, it'll probably be streamed somewhere. Uh, Jay Murta saying it's a honeymoon spot. Listen, I'll just let me give you a little context. That was after what Necker Island or Maldives? No, no Maldives, <laughs> which it is. That <laughs> it is was. definitely it's not a boys' trip getaway. We went there after the London Olympics. Uh, Mike finished off he had like an arrangement there he was like let's go over there it wasn't that far I mean it's far but we went with like a group of guys and it was a blast but it was like yeah it was like a honeymoon spot we had a lot of playing cards a lot of hanging out at the beach and uh, an experience but definitely do not go out with your boys for a bachelor party there that's for sure it's not definitely the spot, not but the spot a beautiful for a bachelor place. party whale sharks went with you were jumping in the ocean there was crazy stuff in the middle it was it was honestly an epic memory but uh, yeah good good, good call and it is we did not know what we were getting into uh, someone asked also uh, Paul H what is the best party both you ever went to I don't know about well I'll let Antonio answer uh, best party I mean I can think of uh, uh, well probably I mean I have a couple I mean a couple of interesting spots maybe you would you probably have your own I, I, let's not do both of what about you just your best place you've ever been to doesn't have to be me for either. a party or just yeah. in general party I mean 
that you can talk about. Some of this stuff you guys got to remember. Yeah, there's, there's like some there's stuff is like <laughs> private parties or different. There's kind a few of parties I'd really love to uh, mention, but I don't really want to say them. I think I have to say we have to give a shout out to uh, to Strauss and, and Marquis. They, well, Marquis I think, Tal, yeah, they I mean, throw and, some pretty epic. Lavo brunches are amazing. Had some fun times there. Right, but I mean, the thing is, I Jason Jason Strauss is the. Uh, owner and operator one of them of the Tau group and yeah. he's been a good friend of ours for a long time and so because of him I've had a lot of incredible nights out my going out days have sadly come to an end I cameo here and there but pretty uh pretty few and far in between the, the night you won the one drop was a hell that was quite a party I mean that was the energy was high there yeah, I was I was feeling pretty good. Yeah, that was a nice one. Eighteen million. But I think they want to know about like the really cool private parties that I you know I gotta say Necker Island kind of two nights ago on Necker Island was pretty strong. You remember that? Pretty strong. You remember that? Some great hospitals. No, there's a lot of good days for sure. There's a Necker Island's a great place to be. Uh, someone's asking how much did you sell on the one drop? See, these are kind of personal questions. No, I can um, answer that question. Okay, I already, okay, go give it I, to me. It was between one and ninety-nine percent, somewhere in that range. So it wasn't zero e- or a hundred. It wasn't zero or hundred. Okay. And they can email my PCA. Maybe he'll crack PCA or I mean, C- CPA. CPA is good. <laughs> Shout out to the Bahamas. Yeah. Email my CPA. Maybe he'll crack. Or ask my dad. Maybe he'll crack. Okay. Well, there you go. That's so somewhere in between. It narrows it down there. a bit. Uh, we are. We are going to, uh, we're, we're here for a bit more and then you're going to go, you're leaving, I'll be here for a few more days and if the, someone wants to get a hold, if someone wants to get, you're not like a huge social media guy, you're very... I post once a month or something. I try and keep it keep it relatively low key. Like when you have two kids, you don't just want to be on the phone all the time and I already have so much other stuff going on in my life, I feel that I'm wasting a lot of life units by being extra on social media. For so sure. I try and cut that down as much as I can. I try and put my phone as much as I can, you know, down and just be with whoever I'm with. It doesn't always work out that way because you life gets in the way, but yeah. I do my best. I could definitely do better. And uh, I could do better. What about uh, what's up, man? What up, Vic? Thank you for the kind words. We're having a good time. We are here. We did we did want to come poolside. The internet cut out a little bit. I think I hope you guys can hear us well and see us well. Antonio's definitely going to be a multiple podcast guest. I want to make give you guys a few minutes here to ask some questions, but we do also want to you know we're here in paradise. It was a question we'll even a fire. I feel it's better than live than doing the the uh, call and stuff. So we want to take this opportunity while we're live to have a nice conversation. But we'll do more in the future. And this one's going to be on the shorter side you know we've done some hour and a half two hours this will not be the case gonna do a few more things or anything that you particularly any kind of message or any kind of uh any kind of i guess you know like you said you wouldn't recommend people necessarily quit their day job and be poker players is there any times trials tribulations that you've had where was there times where you were looking at other something to segue out did you ever think man this is a little crazy was there ever a low point where you've had some you know people think on you other people help me talk about going broke famously like was it did you basically start hit that score with the kid 44 and uh, have a little roll going and kind of never look back or did you ever kind of go bust or any kind of uh, adversity stories early on fortunately and luckily I'm, I never went broke after I hit that um, I do remember the night before that tournament I, my net worth was about 60k I lost 30 of it in one game in a cash game there. in a cash game the night before the WPT started and the next day I, I punkered down 10k so now I'm down to 20. Wait, you put, hold on, you had, you put a third of your whole bank That's roll. correct. You had, the, you had an entire piece of yourself in the, in the 10k? To start, yes, and then when I was, Deeper, I had a couple little, like, small and swaps things. and pieces, okay. um, and then Gustavo Jakobinson, uh, Gus Hansen. Oh, interesting, I never heard him call that. Yeah, um, so Phil Locke calls him Gustavo Jakobinson, That's so hilarious. I always call him Gustavo Jakobinson. I like that name. I, I love that. Gustavo, he's one of my favorite people, although he's always trying to hit on my wife, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> he, um, so I put I, I punkered down another 10k um, to play that tournament, and then I won it, which was nice. So then, and then after that, it was kind of hard to go broke. But about four or five years after that, six years after that, I started thinking, well, maybe I should look into something else because I haven't done anything in a tournament for a long time. But I was out raging every night. I mean, my life was a party. So, so you kinda, moved from LA to Vegas then? I never well, lived in LA before. Okay, I lived you were, in Northern California. Okay, yeah. You moved for, yeah, to Vegas. Area, and then you moved to Vegas. Moved to Vegas and then You took a while you were a late bloomer for partying. You you didn't really party in your twenties much, right? Yeah. I mean, my 
late 20s I kind of started. I won the tournament and then I kind of got introduced to partying and then about 27, 28 I really turned it on for about five years. And yeah, then had a good and then all of a sudden I woke up and I'm like, wow, I haven't won a tournament in so long. All I do is go out every night. Maybe I should do something else with my life. And then I kind of stuck with the poker and then I won that tournament on my birthday and then things started to happen. Things got moving. Well, yeah, that, I think we kind of, we, we met each other and you were, I remember there was times you were taking party buses out at Panorama. Uh, I seen it and I was like, wow, this guy's out of his mind. And I was like, I was in my kind of upcoming grind, hadn't hit, done much. So I was like, I didn't really want to, you were, you were, we had different uh, stages, but we, we connected and I, I just remember you were known as a party guy at that time. But then you've, you know, you oh, had true. different stages and, and it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty hard to get me out and about People are asking, drinking. do you drink? When's like, do you drink anymore? And it, uh, I, I do, I enjoy a glass of wine with dinner and whatnot. I'll drink maybe, like, drink, drink, maybe six nights of the year is my guess. Wow, that's not a lot. Six, seven maybe. I mean, we've been on Necker Island. I haven't been drunk once. Um, I did have oh, two shit. or three cocktails on night one, but not enough to get buzzed. And even now that I drink, it's like vodka water and, you know. I'm kind of a pansy with booze. That's an amazing question. I'm sure we could find that footage somewhere. Someone asked, would you ever take a bullet again? I believe Dan Bilzerian shot you in his home with a gun. You're wearing a bullet True vest, story. which is insane. I've seen the, the video. It's somewhere on the internet, I'm sure. Bilzerian's here right now. I don't know if there's a gun on the island, but we could, I mean, <laughs> would you now, do that again? No, no. Now I have kids. I'm dude, that's way honestly, more or less dude, it's cr- risk averse. I, I, did you way do that more. just to, you, there was no bet or anything? You just did it? No, what happened is I went to Dan's house and he was having a party and there was a film crew. This was uh, probably like 2011 or 10. In that zone. Back in the day. Mm-hmm. And I remember he had a bulletproof vest on the ground and he was shooting, he's about to shoot it. And I thought to myself, what a waste. Why not put the bulletproof vest on and shoot it? And so I thought it was a good idea at the time. Insane, man. It's literally <laughs> insane. Un- actually insane. Someone else asking, what five players would you draft in this year's WSOP accounting for the Wizards playing every event versus some pros? I mean, I don't, like, I guess, uh, is there five, Is there some guys, I mean, are you, you're probably not really following it too closely, but I mean, I'm sure they're just the I, major names. You see some stuff. I don't guys want to talk about the well. Wizards. Yeah, he doesn't, know, support, I think, I don't, he doesn't I don't really support, support sorcery. He's I don't here, support the way the tanking, the and, all tanking and the slow and the, like, staring. I just, I think it's bad for poker and I want nothing to do with it. We're here, the Flow Show know. 2.0, baby. We're going for it. We want to. We want to have fun, play fast, talk, engage, and and I agree. I think there's uh, the poker's kind of at a crossroads with Twitch, YouTube. I think it's great, but there, there's some creative, fun stuff. Like even tournaments, the Big Blind Annie. There's some things that are kind of happening I to kind of make it like. But poker shouldn't be so serious. I mean, I understand that you're you make a living at it, but you know what? You're allowed to have a good time making a living, right? And give other people experience a good experience. Yeah, like yeah. you think the. Bad players want to show up and just be stared at all day when they're trying to make decisions? No, of course not. I don't want to, and they don't want to. Who wants to? Um, someone else asking what helps drive success. Is there any kind of uh, do you have? Is there some? Give us some of your list or people that motivate you, inspire you, or, or who do you kind of? Uh, I don't want to say look up to, but who who's on your list or someone that you think is a like some people that you kind of? Is there anything that, like gets you tri- like gets you real excited or motivated? Like Richard people? Branson gets me excited. That's true. That's motivated. not just like he was on my plug. top three. Of people I wanted to meet after Obama and Eminem. He's number three. And so today, this morning, I got to meet him. And he was so cool and so down to earth and so engaging and so present. And that was really inspirational because I know I've been around a lot of celebrities. I'm not saying that to... But they're typically very antisocial and always trying to run away from social situations. Whereas Richard Branson totally embraced it got deep in it and was just there with everybody i mean he was just he was awesome yes yeah i second that for sure really uh really how do you handle your celebrity jeff gross for what when when people want you know pictures and autographs and all how do you how do you handle it i like he's got the bs you know a true story (laughs) before i ever had any kind of twitch or youtube or anything at all like any kind of like Antonio it was just when I started doing a little bit of stuff or playing some on TV but we would be at airports or be places he would go up to like security people you know just anybody that was like kind of at a thing and like ahead of me and he would like tell them to like pretend like be like really excited that <laughs> this is Jeff Gross so, like True. even like I, I've had one or two times in the last two years where someone will come up to me and I like look around just like wondering you know like is it is Antonio causing doing something but he used to love it he loved to get a rise and do this stuff out of me but anyway so yeah we're uh we're past all that. Um, <laughs> Cypress collectibles. Uh, 
Jeff. That action with the hoodie on the Cajun face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes got to gotta buck her up. Um, I'm not sure. I under- Would you recommend the 50 special 50K 500 event at Marathon Maker? I'm not sure he's probably even seen the schedule. I don't know if he could recommend a schedule I have for no me. idea what tournaments yeah, are where or what's he's, going on. Uh, yeah, he doesn't know. I know right, when my guys, kid we, gets out of school tomorrow. He, knows, know. the, he, he knows the important well, stuff. School tomorrow, we're up to 40 watching. We had a cut. That's a lot for a live, unreally scheduled podcast. That's pretty nice because this will be aired on YouTube. We're going to get it on the other publications as well. I am going to let Antonio go pretty shortly here because we are going to have on the shorter side podcast. Actually, we're going to have you for multiple podcasts. I think we yeah. can agree Short on that. Short and sweet. Necker Short and Island, sweet. Last Necker, night. We'll come back in, later. We'll to be, be continued. Yeah, but we're, we'll dig into PBF's life a little bit more. Well, we're not out yet. We're going to take a few more minutes, guys. Oh. If you have any last minute questions I'm, gonna, I'm just giving you like a pre-segue we're, we're coming down to the wire here uh, I just wanted to say um, I do want to acknowledge you again for my giving you credit from my wife basically I would not have met her you're I would not you're have welcome. met her so thank you you're welcome. my beautiful lovely amazing wife Amelia who we miss and is always makes us laugh and have a good time she did not attend we are going to uh we're going to be in a couple of, uh, I'm trying to think next trips. I don't think we have a spar. There's not really any poker trips that I know planned uh, coming up. I'm trying to think if we have any any other kind of content we'll be doing. Do you, do you, what other podcasts have you done besides I know? Actually, you did Howard Stern, didn't you? Mm-hmm. You did Howard Stern. How was that experience? That's amazing. Like, on that basically a podcast or it's like a show, TV show, podcast? I mean, I, I remember going in studio and I, 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 the, the thing that I remember the most was... I'm going on Howard Stern. I'm pretty excited, right? He's I've always been a fan. And we're going to talk about cool stuff, right? So I'm in the green room, and they're like, okay, time to come in. So as I'm going in, literally I turn the room. As soon as I have eyes on Howard, he's about, I don't know, 15 feet away at his little desk thing. I'm walking. Some ninja puts a microphone on me out of nowhere. This person just came out of nowhere. All of a sudden, I'm... And he's like, hey, Antonio, welcome to the show. Um, no, there was like no hello, how are you? Like, we're going to go on in two seconds. It was just bam, right on the show. And his first question out is, what percentage of yourself did you have in the tournament? Oh, shit. And, so you, and I think to myself, wow, I never thought Howard would even know to ask that question. But supposedly everybody had sent him, you know, his, his production team, yeah. like, find out what percentage he had. And he was relentless in trying to get that out of me. <laughs> How did uh, how did you handle that? Because that's kind of like you want the right. same kind of deal. Yeah, it was just, like, yeah, just just call my CPA. He'll he'll tell you no problem. Did, did you do you feel like was the chemistry good or did he kind of? It was like good, he was but like, he was a bit tilted that I wouldn't release that information. He's like, I don't get it. Why wouldn't you tell me? Like, we want to know how much you made. Right. Yeah. That's uh. Yeah. He asked him. He goes right for it. So respect right for him. it. He's a that's the legend of legends in the uh, podcasting or show and all that. I don't even I haven't seen him in a while. He was great. Know. How did you? How did they reach out to you or did you? How did that happen for you to get on there? Um. My manager, Brian Balsba, somehow set it up. I don't really know how it went down, but they were, after winning that tournament, they were going to get me on one of the shows. It was either the late night or the, you know, one of the late night shows um, or Howard Stern, which obviously was my first pick. So. That's that's sick. Uh, Someone saying best podcast to date. Appreciate that, Moni Cahill, Lawrence SS, saying you're both an inspiration. Um, much love, man. Good to see you. Uh, what's your favorite mix game? Do you play any other games besides? Um, I'm, a, I'm a Hold'em specialist fish. Not even a specialist at that. All right, fair enough. No. I've started to play Omaha a little bit in the last couple of years, Omaha but I'm, fun. I kind of suck at it. But it is a lot of fun. Um, what is? Yeah, give us all right. Well, man, there's so actually the more I think about it, there's just so many interesting, like unique things that none other friends or poker players I know really food has arrived. Get in here, no worries, as long as I don't mind being live. This is service on Necker Island, Island, seriously. Put it on the the bucket list. I mean, what they even have like a fly cover? Look at this thing for the salad. What do we do? Wow, thank you so much. Thank you. Do you have a little sorry, guys? Guys, please excuse me. Got to feed Antonio, he he gets angry, he gets grumpy. Hold on, let me put, I do. I need to eat a lot. You might have to eat. I'm gonna put mine over here. Well, I can't eat and talk. That'll be bad, yeah, right? No, I think you shouldn't, but we'll just, it's closer so at least. We're gonna be. We're gonna be done soon. I'll wait. Well, yeah, ish, soonish. We're up, we're peaking. This is like we're setting records. People are coming in. You got have one tomato. Yeah, Hold I mean, me that's over. reasonable. Let's see what else is going on. Where is Locke? People want to know. Phil. Oh, let's talk about that. I bet you the show with the great Phil Locke. Respect the man, the myth, the legend. He is. Now he is the man. The he myth, is the legend. absolutely. He's gonna be on the podcast. Don't panic, guys. I promise you, we'll have him. Um, tell me uh, a little bit about your experience with that show. I bet you. How did that come up? How did like? Because like if you 
you have an idea, you're known for prop betting. You've done some crazy stuff. I mean, we between the two of us, we've been involved or known or had parts in some of the more, I think, epic gambling stories or, or bets of all time. Uh, what would you say... Like, how did that actually happen? Because you guys are betting stuff. How do you then get a TV show? A to guy named Crispin came up with the idea. Somehow it got pitched to a production company who called us and said, hey, we want to pitch this show. Can you guys come to New York and film like a half a day? We're just going to go and do some stuff on the streets of New York. We're like, sure. Um, went, did the filming, think for sure nothing is ever going to come of it. Then some time goes by, I think a few months, maybe four, five, six months. And we get a call, hey guys, we got we got picked up. You guys wanna do this? And our manager negotiated a deal with this production company. And next thing you know, we were out filming I Bet You and it was some of the most fun I've ever had in my life. It was awesome. We used to just walk around and bet on the stupidest things with cameras following us around. I mean, it was just like two degenerate gamblers, dreams come true. I miss those days. I remember the one, the one that stood out for me that I don't, I didn't see much of the shows, but I saw some of the skits. The one about the most potent sperm count was a bet. Who had more potent sperm? It didn't yeah. feel like go off the charts. Off like the it was charts. like a record. 498 million, I, I believe. Some, yeah. I like had it, double, like I had average, like 68 yeah. million. I was right, double let's average. Let's clarify that right? strong sperm. I held too, my own. But his was like. But a, then Phil just went off a, the radar. It was like a yeah space cadet, like yeah. something that never seen before. So that that doesn't surprise me. People are asking where he is. He's around, man. Phil's kind of you know he's in and out, but uh, I think you'll be seeing more of him. Uh, when are you gonna? Oh, Tony Grant, we already covered and covered that. That was earlier in the show. Not as much tournaments these days. Family man. Um, what about uh, all right? Best, most exciting prop bet or most like unique bet I mean I, I, you mentioned to me the one about the man who got implants for a year I don't know if anyone's heard that true story the guy got 100k had to leave it in for one year he ended up keeping him he still has him right that was like yep, kind of he never crazy. let go never let go uh, tell tell some of us what, uh, I'll pay you 100 to get boobs for a year 100 grand you'd offer me to put in implants sure what, on the uh, table what about uh, what what size C's C cups for yeah, one year I can take off for 100 yeah. G's 100k on the table that was 100k back then. That's probably it's probably more nowadays. I, don't, I honestly I, that doesn't. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I don't. I don't want that on my hands. But can I'm we sure mention the other some, the other one I've offered you uh, for the naming? Oh yeah, you could mention it. Put it out there. See what people think. Go ahead. I offered PBF a price to name his child after me. So not Antonio though. <laughs> my real name is Amir. I was born Amir. So if he wants to name his son Amir, there's a price. Uh, Amelia, we're gonna talk about it. I, <laughs> I don't. I mean, it's. I don't know. I, I don't think it's happening, but it's. It's there. Um, it's more than the boobs. What? Yeah, more. It's six. It's in the six figure club. It, it's worth <laughs> considering strongly. Um, I. What about. Uh, what about the bicycle bet with Rast? That was pretty epic. All that stuff. Is there, is there any like? Is there anything that you've been a part of like that you can talk about? Because some of the stuff. There's some bets and things that you know just in general aren't always brought up. I'm just trying to think. I, I can think of a lot of, I mean, you're in action. You're a guy, you're, you're looking to fire. You love betting. The show, I bet you stopped. You didn't stop. You like to, you like to put out random crazy well, bets. You have long bets, 10 year bets, five year bets, crazy bets. This I actually bet, probably bet. have a bad habit of always saying you want to bet because I feel that betting just stops the agree, uh, argument or the yeah, two yeah, sides. Yeah, yeah, I, I you know, when, when two people have an opinion, instead of going back and forth and thinking each other is right it's like well let's see who's really actually willing to truly believe they're right by putting their money on it and one of the greatest and so it just kind of shuts everybody up and so i always just my first natural inclination is to just say you want to bet yeah you for real because people say you know, shit all the i time. probably say that too often but that's just it's like hey, embedded show, into my I bet soul you after it um speaking of that lot and things i want to touch on as well you and uh, johnny lot you were there phil lock and you basically created this pretty interesting game which is sort of that premise where if you if you play a game and you, you you do a chinese auction you start talking about betting if someone comes with a price and says this is the price you know for something oh how much to go do that and they say well this is the price it's you basically say all right like there's times we've offered people to do that on the spot yeah i remember daniel vogel i don't know you remember daniel yeah, vogel of course of course um, we did a lot and thinks on how much it would cost for him to shave his head and he's got he's one of those like You know good looking white boys with long hair and he, it's, it's, <laughs> I don't think he'd look so great without without the long hair. He was very good with the ladies and um, The the line was he he set the line at 7k for his own price and oh, yeah, yeah. so afterwards we offered him 7K to shave because his head. Because you have to remember, people are betting. So, like, there's people that are, like, they're on both sides and they make an agreement and they're betting what his real answer is. So when they, so now someone loses money in a wager and now when right, you propose and says, Here, to the guy. Well, you said 7K. Here's 7K to shave your head. And then all of a sudden he didn't want to do it. And so 
it's like, well, you didn't really set the real number because if you set it at 7K, you should take 7K. That also, this, uh, this, this reminds me of a time in South Africa. Antonio and I played in an, a WPT Alpha 8. We went on a safari, which was up there, pretty amazing. Not yeah, the best awesome. trip for us. Both of us, otherwise, we had it was a long Dan. flight. Yeah, Action Dan, Action Dan Harrington, Dan, Harrington. Harrington, and his one Eric of his best Seidel. friends, De Eric Seidel, are on a bus, oh. and his number. How much he would have to pay to not <laughs> wear socks for the rest of his life, like weddings? You're going somewhere, you just can't wear socks. Just anywhere. for Dan you're, Harrington, you're skiing, for his number, whatever you're doing. How much would Dan Harrington have to be paid? I believe it was 250 grand in that vicinity. He and I had the under. Life. You had the under. I think it was 150, but it was somewhere it was, in that range. No, it was over 200 ish. He would not be paid. Uh, to do it, and then Eric Seidel was at the expense. Who uh, yeah, on the Eric Seidel lost his Seidel mind. lost it, and then he was about to pay one of his best friends to. He was going to hand him two hundred grand again. to never wear socks, just to tell him how ridiculous of a like how because he, he knows he like likes to ski, does other shit. Yeah. Like, how can he not wear socks? Like, and the guy's <laughs> old, you know, he's on the older side, and like, what's it really going? to He knows he has money; it's not going to change his life. So anyway, interesting game, Laden thinks, and they are the creator uh, officially. You and Phil Lockett credit with that, and I think Laden Most was the Phil, guy. Right. He was the guy at the table who you guys yeah. picked as the brain, which is a great game. We can talk about the other time. We're getting, we're getting, we keep this is like a live un. Unpublicized podcast. There's a lot of people on, man. I, I we are gonna have to quit very soon can because. I eat, can I eat now? Well, you want to eat while you're on the thing. Or you no, want to quit? I'd like to. You like to or not quit? You want to? And I'd, how about we do this, guys? We're gonna stay on for a few more minutes. I want to look on three my more Instagram. Minutes. All right, I want to. Uh, let's do three more minutes. Up. Okay, and let's see if I'm gonna go on my Instagram see if there's a uh, podcast question. Oh, we didn't do it. He didn't Maybe I'll it sneak up. a piece of chicken in the meantime. Have a sneak. I'm oh, gonna look on so Instagram, much. guys. Jeff Gross Poker on Instagram. I will see if there's a question for you guys. I don't think we got it up there, but Vadrin's a legend. He gets it all done. I can't even. No, we can just take questions on uh, on here for a minute or two while he's preparing his salad. Man, he's getting a little hungry. Uh, it's T Show. Oh, oh, there's T Show. Oh, T shit. Show's firing. T Show's in the what chat. We, Black T -show. Cloud. T Show. Yo, yeah, of course. You know he's asking about oh, the spar bet. Yeah, that. People will get a kick out of this. This one. is fun. So we were in uh, Tel Aviv, yep. and I go. There's my uh, financial. Accountant advisor, T Show. Um, so PBF pipes up with this amazing stock tip, right? Investment idea and tells the whole table and he's all gung ho about it and it's gonna just crush, right? And so my experience is if I shorted every stock tip I ever got in my life, I would be a little bit wealthier. He knows nothing about it or anything. No I don't know clue. anything about it. So when PBF pipes up, I say, what is the ticker? What, what price is it at? And it was at nine fourteen, I believe. Nine, nine dollars, nine forty seven. Nine forty seven. Nine dollars and forty seven cents a share. And I say, I'll bet you it goes to seven forty seven before it goes to eleven forty seven. Two dollars swing either way. And now we bet ten grand. This is while he is perked up and telling everybody about this stock tip, right? So it's kind of like he has no choice but to bet, <laughs> right? I bet. So we bet. And where did it go before it went to 1147? Well, it was fluctuating a lot. It was hovering curious. around. It dipped over for what a second. It, okay. it got up to $17, though, at one point. So, T show. But good before call. it got to 17 it dipped a bit below. Before I it lost got to 17 the moral of the story. Did it get to 747? It hit, hit it Thank at you. some point, and then it got up very the high. The lesson to learn is any stock tip you ever get, bet the other side. Uh, can I eat now? I can ask that one. I am. Uh, Good looking white boys, lol. That's uh, that's funny. Middle name, man. How much for the middle name to be Amir? Does that excite you? Zero. Zero? Uh, nah, like, no, there's some like, price. It doesn't. I, I need to hear you call your son Amir. <laughs> Amir. You know? Amir for six figure jigger. All right. <laughs> uh, Bitcoin questions. How do you feel? Any any uh, feeling on Bitcoin up or down? Do you like it? Do you not like it? I don't Future have any Bitcoin advice. Um, what are you, you're around a lot of smart people. That's one of the things you do. You surround I, yourself. With there was good a while people. where I was really depressed that I didn't didn't get into the Bitcoin game, and then obviously now I'm like, okay, great. I didn't miss the boat. That depends when you got in. It's still True. like five x from 2016. Late. Whatever. You know? I have no idea. It's not my right, specialty. Not his, he's gonna tell Just you. Just ask Rass. He knows everything about Bitcoin. Um. Okay, guys. On this note, Antonio's food is here. I know this is on the much shorter side, but again, this is not. This isn't a once-off like Richard Branson. I'll be back. I'll We're, be back. This is a guy. We can be in LA. We could be in places. I can get him on. We're gonna do longer sit downs. We got the wind thing going. We got we got friends here. We're already on Necker, so we do want to enjoy the the beautiful weather on our last day here from Paradise. Big thank you to Bill Perkins for. Uh, this whole this experience, he's turning 50 guys. So give him, go give Bill a shout. Thank him for uh, you know being such a great guy. And his thirst lounge is launching on February 14th. I'm gonna stick around, help with that, get that going. TL10 is underway, and uh, we'll be seeing much more of Antonio in the future, guys. So don't worry. And of course, give him a follow. Let me just real quick show you again his socials. He does post action on Stake Kings 
So check that out. He's going to have a 10K coming up there. We have his Instagram, Magic Antonio. Posts not a lot, but he posts high quality, fun, engaging stuff when he does. So give him a follow there. Twitter, same thing. Not so much, but he does. I think he even gave us a retweet. Did you get that out there today for the people? Look at that, man. A lot of, lot of likes. So guys, give him a follow. Help him out. And of course, the biggest win in the history of poker belongs to this gentleman right here and his illustrious career 18 million right there two-thirds of all his cash is one tournament it's crazy how that works but it was a big one million dollar buy-in he got it done a lot of great questions a lot of exciting uh exciting people in here giving us some good engagement we appreciate it and we will get this podcast out across all the different socials we're building it we're learning as we go shout out to men of finks all the boys good to see you and bill for the 50th the reason we're here we're down in necker because of bill so antonio anything you want to say to the people you did great you're a natural i'm gonna eat He's going to eat, and we'll see you guys very soon. Thank you for watching, and uh, this will be posted as a replay. Get a bite in there. Go ahead.